So in this video, we are going to use a greedy heuristic to solve the set covering problem. Uh, so a couple things. Uh, a heuristic uh, means that we will get a feasible solution to the set covering problem, but not necessarily an optimal one. Um, so it means it's feasible, it meets all constraints, but not necessarily at the minimum cost. Um, and these four steps of the greedy heuristic are put here, but we'll walk through them uh, through an example. And so just as a reminder, um, CJ is the cost uh, to build a facility in location J. That's an input parameter. XJ is the decision variable. It's one if we decide to build in location J, it's zero otherwise. Um, so step one looks and says, if there's no cost to build, you should build there, uh, which usually isn't the case. But if it's free to build in a location, you should. That's step one. Um, and then we will go on uh, from this, step two, three, and four. Um, and so we'll go through each of these through an example. So that example, um, let's consider a rural county who needs to locate several emergency um, medical response units. And it has a requirement that we have to reach each county within eight minutes of the call. So if someone calls 911, we have to be able to get to them within eight minutes. Um, the county is divided into seven population zones, and the distance between the centers of each of these zones is known and given on the matrix on the next slide. So a couple things, we need to get to each of these zones within eight minutes, and we know the distances between them. So this information, again, is an input parameter, it's given. So between zone one and one, okay, we can get there within eight minutes. Between zone one and two, it would take four minutes. Um, zone one and three, 12 minutes and, and so forth. So this is information that's given. And also what's been given is there are different costs of building in each of these zones. So if I build in zone one, it costs $100,000. If I build in zone two, $80,000, $80, and so forth. Um, and we also assume that we can travel at a speed of 60 miles per hour. And our goal um, in this problem is to formulate an appropriate set covering model to determine where the unit should be located and how the population zones are to be covered. And then we should solve that using the greedy heuristic. All right, so first we need to determine the cover parameter. Remember AIJ is a parameter, it's a binary parameter that says one, if zone I center can be reached from the center of zone J within eight minutes. So this is specific for this problem, it's zero otherwise. And so given we have the data for distances, DIJ, what this says is if the distance between I and J is greater than eight minutes, we would say that the AIJ value is zero. If the distance between I and J is less than or equal to eight minutes, then we'd give it a value of one. And so if we take this data, this is the same DIJ value given on the previous slide for each of the seven regions, we can then convert this to the AIJ matrix. And so how would we do that? Well, we can think about a relatively simple if-then statement. And I recommend for the homework problem about Pennsylvania that you think through this uh, and do this on um, Excel. So if you had something that said eight, um, what happens if DIJ is less than or equal to eight, then you should put a one. If not, it should be a zero. So in Excel, this is how you do an if then statement. And so we could do that in Excel. So what does that mean? Um, you can see that from I to J, uh, so here from one to one, why is this a one? Because you can get from one to one within eight minutes. Um, you can also get from one to two in eight minutes. Um, one to three, though, you cannot get there in eight minutes, and therefore this is a zero, okay? And so you can convert that. Um, so what do we have here? We now have a binary parameter. And remember, these input parameters are then used to create set covering constraints. And so what can you say? One thing you can say is uh, how, which facilities are reachable, um, within eight minutes, uh, and we remember have to cover all of our facilities. And so what do we do? We use this AIJ matrix, and we use that to create our set covering constraint. 
So what does this first constraint say? It says that we need to build in either location one or location two or location four or location seven. At least one of those have to be one. All right, where does that come from? Let's go back to the AIJ matrix. What that says is we can either build in one, two, four, or seven. That's where the AIJ matrix is one. And what does that mean? It means in order for me to cover one, I can either build in one, two, four, or seven, and each of those um, are within eight minutes, and I would be okay for my emergency response criteria. And so this AIJ matrix is multiplied, matrix multiplication by the XJ, um, and so you would multiply one times X1 plus two or one times x2 plus zero times x3 and so forth that gives you what we have here and so what we have is again this first constraint says i need to cover uh zone one this constraint says i need to cover zone two this constraint says i need to cover zone three and what is different uh is the x's show up um and i don't explicitly have a one here or a zero here, uh, but that's the ones and zeros from the AIJ matrix. And so as a reminder, what are we doing in terms of the set covering? We're minimizing the total cost of building. So the sum over there could seven different locations, they cost different amounts, and they are again binary variables. So that's on the bottom. And there's a set covering constraint for each region that needs to be covered. And the decision variables are one if we build in uh, facility I and zero other ones. So that's the formulation for this specific problem. And so now let's go and solve it. So what is the answer? Where should we build? That's where we're going to use the set covering um, heuristic. And so the first step, uh, which I just have stated here, it says if CJ is zero for any of them, you should, you should build there and then remove all constraints in which it appears. So you can see here CJ, none of them, that's the coefficient in front of the X's, are zero. So uh, we go to step two, okay? So there's nothing to do there uh, for this specific problem. All right, so step two says, if CJ is greater than zero for any of the J, and XJ does not appear with a plus one coefficient in any of the remaining constraints, we should not build there. So in other words, we should set that to zero. So here are all our remaining constraints, which is the original formulation, because we're just started. And you can see X1 shows up, X2 shows up, X3 shows up, X4 shows up, X5 shows up, X6 shows up, and X7 shows up. And therefore, there's nothing we can do. So because they show up, all of them show up, we can move to step three. All right, so what does step three say? Step three says for each of the remaining variables, we need to determine CJ divided by DJ. So CJ is the coefficient in our objective function, and DJ is something we will calculate. So DJ is the number of constraints in which XJ appears with a positive one. So we need to calculate that for all of the Xs that are left, and then select the variable for which it's minimum and set that one to one, meaning we build there, and then we can remove all the constraints that have a plus one. All right, so here I'm just pasting back uh, the model we had on the previous slide. And so what we need to do is we need to calculate CJ divided by DJ. So CJ again is just the coefficient. So C of one is 100, C of two is 80, C of three is 120 and so forth. So that's just the coefficient in the objective function. And then DJ we do need to calculate. And so DJ is the number of constraints in which XJ appears with plus one. So let's just start here. One thing to note is the number of constraints, the set covering constraints. So the binary constraints don't count. That's why I put this blue um, bar there. So for X1, we would have one, two, three. So DJ is three. For X2, we have one, two, three, four, five. So DJ is five. For X3, we have one, two, three, four. So XJ, X3, DJ, D3 is uh, four and so forth. So you would do that, and what are you really doing when we're counting DJ? We're basically saying, if I build here, how many regions get covered? And so you could see now we're gonna divide CJ divided by DJ. What is that saying? It's saying I have to pay this much to build, but on the denominator, I get this much benefit. 
And so we're kind of CJ divided by DJ. You can think about it as like, what's the bang for your buck of building in a certain region? So you look at if I build in region one, it costs me a hundred, but I get three constraints uh, satisfied. So on average, it costs me about $33.3 per constraint. In region two, I have to pay 80, but I get five constraints covered. And so that only costs me $16 per constraint that I get covered and so forth. And so you now pick the minimum CJ divided by DJ. So for this uh, step, the minimum is 16. That means we should build an X2. So that means we should set X2 equals to one. And so if we set X2 equals to one, what happens? So one of the things here is we can look at every constraint that has X2 in it. And what can we say? It's now that constraint is feasible. So let's just take this first constraint. And if we set X2 to be one, no matter what X1, X4, and X7 are, one is greater than or equal to one. So what does that mean? That means that constraint is feasible. We can do whatever we want with X1 and X4 and X7. We can have them be zero or one. It doesn't matter because the first constraint is satisfied. So what we will do is we will remove any constraints that have X2 in them because you can think about they're already checked off. We have a feasible solution to that constraint. So we're going to remove this constraint, this constraint, and the bottom three because they have a positive X2 in front of them. All right, so that's what we do. So we move, remove them and now we only have these two constraints left. And so we can then repeat step three again, um, which again says we need to calculate CJ, which is just again the coefficient, but now we only have to do it for the ones that don't have anything. So X2 is gone because we already said it. Interestingly enough, X1, went away because there's no uh, X's in here. And so we have the CJ's and then we have DJ, but DJ is changing now because here we have only two constraints that have X3 in it, two constraints that have X4, one that has X5, one that has X6, and one that has X7. And so what are we doing here? We're really thinking about the other constraints are okay. The other regions are already covered. If we also cover them, that's great, but that's not adding to our requirement. So the only ones that aren't covered are these two constraints that are left. And we wanna know the bang for the buck of again, building um, and associated with the remaining constraints. So that's what CJ divided by DJ is. And if we look here, we then find the minimum. And so in this case, the minimum is X4. And that means we should also build in X4. So we should set X4 equals to one. And then we should remove, so if we set X4 equals to one, that means one is greater than or equal to one. That means that constraint is satisfied. No matter what you set X3, X5, X6, we're good with that constraint. And similarly to this constraint. And so we can then remove the rest of those constraints. And what do you have left? Well, what we have left is basically um, a, a model that doesn't have any more uh, set covering constraints. And so if we wanted to minimize this function, what would we do? We'd set X3, X5, X6, X7 to zero. We don't need to cover um, any other regions with those. So we shouldn't spend money building um, sites. And so we should set them to zero. And that's exactly what step four says. If there are no more constraints, we set all the remaining variables to zero and stop. And so that's what we, we do. And so we set X3, X5, X6, X7 to zero, and then we're done. So we have now solved the set covering problem. What is the actual answer? So the actual answer is, if you remember, first we said X2 and X4 to build. So X2 is equal to one, X4 is equal to one. What does that mean is we should build a facility in zones two and four. It's also important to say explicitly, what are we doing in the other regions? It is not true to just leave them. You should explicitly say X1, X3, X5, X6, X7 is equal to zero because the decision variable there is not to do anything, it's specifically to not build. And so that is our decision variable values found from the greedy heuristic. And if we plug those decision variable values into our objective function, then we get that we should build in two and four and that costs $1.9 million. 
So this is our objective function value found using these decision variable values. So that is how you solve um, a set covering problem using the greedy heuristic. So my question to you is, the greedy heuristic is guaranteed to provide blank to the set covering problem. Is it guaranteed to provide a feasible and optimal solution? A feasible but not optimal solution, not feasible, not optimal, or neither a feasible nor uh, an optimal solution or a dominated solution. So what do you think? So the correct answer here is B. It is always feasible, but it's not necessarily optimal. And so the correct answer is B. As a reminder to what the, those two words mean, is a feasible solution satisfies all the constraints. The greedy heuristic goes through all of those constraints and makes sure they're satisfied. So we aren't able to remove them from the, the, the process until we set something equal to one. And remember, all of those set covering constraints have greater than or equal to one. So as long as we set them one, they're feasible. And we do that such that all of the constraints have been set feasible. So the solution is feasible, but it's not optimal. It's not guaranteed to give you the best um, objective function value. Oftentimes it does very well, but there are certain situations by picking one that is the greedy, which means greedy in this case means that we pick the minimum CJ divided by DJ, you can get yourself into a point where you're not always guaranteeing the optimal or the minimum cost solution. So again, back to the clicker question, the correct answer is it's always guaranteed to give you a feasible solution. All constraints are satisfied, but not an optimal solution. So with that, uh, that wraps up the material on the set covering. I will also go over um, another example problem. Um, if you wanted to solve and make sure you got the optimal solution, we should use Excel Solver or some other optimization software. Um, and so there'll be a video on that as well.